the indian government i think were did a very sensible thing okay. they did not try to put any restrictions okay jisko jana hai jao war has no place here, right? mm-hmm. you see dead bodies coming down from tiger hill mm-hmm. we used to unwrap those bodies i said uh, well how many you know so good i'm really glad tell me how many countries is china got a border with i was asking kind of question which is like competition success yes, you know yeah, how many yeah, states yeah. are there yes. they, they couldn't answer it it gets more tough because what happens is the army also is watching who are the guys who are more prone towards them so mm. when they are when you going into a zone of war they will pick up those guys mm. who unko malum hai ki thoda zyada criticize kar ya sorry bari mere ko nahi le jayenge i mean maybe these are issues but mm. uh, i don't know i mean you know it, as i said it's an evolving process yeah how do you how do you actually tackle the thing like this uh, hmm. it's a major challenge hmm, hmm, hmm. but but there are no courses for it there no there no media management and perception and all that because that's not how you do it right what you need to do is actually increase the level of education yeah and i would start really at the school level i mean i was really you are, hammering you are. Yeah, that program yeah. of yours is wonderful that you are now doing with the sam valley school also and you we are doing that doing but your, you see we are we are still lives. we are still a minuscule minuscule drop in the ocean yes so now we are looking at that illustrated military history we're going to try and plug that into as many institutions right it's so illustrated military history for me has been a major education Right. Because now I'm no longer looking at Battle of Panipat the peace be. I'm looking at it in its entire totality, right. and you yeah. just begin to realize that what was happening. And actually, there's a massive organic link between what's happening in Punjab and what's happening in Tripura and what's happening in the Palawas and the Chola. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, these are just names, names on the walls yeah, of temples. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we're working on all that. So in Kargil, we lost a lot of people, and it was a very tragic war for us. uh this is an opinion that i'm asking you that had we not had the intelligence failure we had and had we been strategically better prepared do you think kargil was totally avoidable as a war in 1980s early 80s 84 i think we mm-hmm. decided to create a second division in ladakh right which was 28 division mm-hmm. it was raised in nimu mm-hmm. general ramu gaur was the first doc mm-hmm. its formation sign is also twin lightning strikes okay it was more like a lightning strike division hmm. prior to that the three infantry division was sitting in ladakh hmm. and you had one to one infantry brigade sitting guarding your national highway 1a coming up okay this was your total defenses in in ladakh in that region, the entire and in winter we used to withdraw, withdraw from that area because you see the area when you cross dojila and you move along the loc hmm. the line of control yeah it's actually worse than siachen i see in many ways okay in terms of the amount of snowfall that you receive and the temperature it's more than siachen in that area in some in some sectors yes i think the majority siachen mein to baraf phir bhi impacted and kuya hai wo wo hai you know you know what the problems there are hmm. here the terrain is changing you know 15 feet of snow in a night i hmm. mean is that kind of a thing you know hmm. you get buried alive hmm. is very very difficult so both sides had this unwritten understanding where you used to pull back yeah and this whole area was left wide open mm-hmm. now 28 division was raised it changed the entire balance of power in that in the in the in, in the northern part of jammu and kashmir mm-hmm. and if you we raised it for whatever reason because mm-hmm. before that three division was a bit of a bastard division i'm using that term very deliberately because mm-hmm. they didn't know whether they were facing china or they were facing pakistan i see they were facing both Okay. 70 brigade were deployed against Chaira, Gumri, Dumti, all this stuff. 114 was looking after this thing. Ladakh Scouts were looking after this. Suddenly the border changed. There was a Siachen glacier, then there was the Tortuk area. Then the enemy was different. Hmm. Till here is China, from here is Pakistan, like that. Hmm. So they were really stretched hmm. on the ground. Yeah. But things were moving like that since 1947. Nobody was particularly worried about it. Hmm. And we even with the Chinese, what had happened in sixty two, they pulled back to their claim line. Things were more or less stable, static, static mode or stable mode, whatever. Twenty mm-hmm. eight division came in, mm-hmm. and this was, I think, also the time when General Sundarji and all these people were coming to the help. Mm-hmm. We were talking about strike call. We were talking about this and that, and there was a lot of aggressive talk of aggressive, going on. Yeah. And I think the Pakistanis looked at the the raising of twenty eight division with a lot of alarm as a threat. Yeah. and we were also moving up bmps and stuff like the beginning of armor going into the valley and stuff like that. okay so it into the ladakh area yeah so if i was a pakistani commander hmm. how would i look at it i'd be worried i would be very worried because yes. kardu has always been there 
and gilgate has always been the weak link yeah. and you could actually if you can get past that cp area with armor you can actually run through and general sundarji was talking that language you see okay now then things began to happen differently hmm. it came 1989 okay and uh, those bomb blasts went off at trc the valley suddenly exploded now what we did was having created a punching a fist yeah in the in ladakh we now pulled 28 pulled division out and took it to kuvar okay in the so we created so we were back to status quo right. what we were before 20, 28 division was raised right and when we came back here etc the insurgency in the valley played itself out 28 division became a very important part even 8 division was moved in from the northeast back in so they all went into counter insurgency they all went into counter insurgency rr and all that came up etc so the role the whole thing started to change yeah now the problem was that Musharraf had been a brigade commander in Siachen when uh, 28th was being ha, around that time. Okay, and uh, he was a very insuc- unsuccessful brigade commander in Siachen. Pakistanis have been lying in Siachen right from the word go. They are not on Siachen. They are nowhere near Siachen. Mm. They are on the other side of the Saltoro Range. Okay, वो बोलते रहते हैं हम Siachen में Siachen में बकास कर रहे हैं. कभी थे ही नहीं वहाँ पे. They were जो बालासिंग का वो वहाँ पे भी विक्ट हो गए उनके जो Those you flown over all these areas. Yeah. You've seen flown them over. I've been on the ground here. I've, yeah. I've been operating there. First time. Yeah. So Musharraf had this, hmm. and he had launched a few. He had a special forces. He had launched a few attacks. You know that he had got egg on his face every time. Hmm. He made no hmm. headway. Hmm. Now he comes. Now he becomes this thing, and Nawaz Sharif is this. All that is going on. He was always looking. He was he was kind of actually obsessed to some extent. If you see all his writings, readings, etc. Yeah. And he had this grandiose plan that if I can cut this off, one one national highway one ago, I cut it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was a plan on paper. See, Pakistani plans on paper even in '65 were brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were bold. Yeah. I won't call them brilliant, but they were bold. bold. They were actually some of them were stupid, but they were they were bold in their but their execution has always been third rate. Yeah. It's been so bad hmm. that it's like you give a guy a loaded rifle and you say this is the most sophisticated rifle you can take a guy out at three kilometers. Correct. Also, check on him. अपने आप को गोली मार दे. तो वही वाली इनके साथ चलारियों है पाकिस्तान के साथ तो एक ग्रेट एक्सटेंड. Best weapon systems there. Yeah. Modern artillery. Best weapons. Maybe sixty-five. We we've been following. Yeah. So when they have actually gone into Kargil, hmm. occupied these heights. Yeah. It was a spoiling action. Okay. Because they were expecting us to get aggressive. That's the time Vajpayee had also come in. The nuclear blast had happened. Yes. It was a caretaker government. All mm. kinds of things were happening, mm. and they felt that we are going to come down and try and make a grab for Skar. That's my reading of the situation. Mm. So they did this to preempt us. Preempt us from going to Skar. Going to do, launching some sort of an attack on Skar. Okay. okay. I've my own argument is a little faulty because at one level Indians don't think like that. Mm. We were not. You know that proactive, hmm. but if you look at it from a Pakistani perspective, perspective, you look at it, if a Pakistani general was given those kind of things and said, "Tum kya karte?" Wo, wo he would expect that as a thing. logical action. So they have thought along their own lines, hmm. and then they've tripped a little bit because the execution was again wonky. Hmm. Was it an intelligence failure? Well, uh, yes and no. Hmm. I say yes and no for two reasons. One, if you look at all the newspaper reporting in Kashmir and all before that, hmm. because we used, we used to withdraw, they used to withdraw. Hmm. Oh, there used to be all kinds of reports that Pakistanis have come here. This is this is now. How much are you going to verify? So a lot of it was false. And this was going on for years. Okay. All right. Okay. This year also they had said, "Ye hoga, ye hoga, ye hoga." Hmm. We had problems. We were caught up. We, we were caught with our pants down. Hmm. We know two ways about it. Hmm. Our intelligence did not pick up any movement on their side. It's a fact. Hmm. But you are dealing with one of the most difficult terrains in the world, and there was some report of a helicopter spot. There was one chopper sortie in which General Badwar was on board. Hmm. Uh, later, Lieutenant General Khansom Emalia, he was commanding 27 Rajas. He was on board. Hmm. Two pilots were on board. Okay. And they saw footprints in the snow. Okay. They circled that. They saw Sangar. They saw one guy come out hmm. with a weapon. Hmm. And then he realized it's an Indian Air Force, uh, Indian Army chopper, so he actually hid his weapon. Hmm. But they he was they were seen. But then again, uh, there were some shepherds who came and said, "Ki sab is area mein ye 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 ho raha hai." But in this area, to verify it, it takes time. Lagta hai. Hmm. You just can't go blundering into it. Hmm. But as I said, it was an intelligence failure. Right. And what have we done subsequently? We have now saturated that area. Now everything is watched. Hmm. Everything is done. Yeah. So in a way, you know, it was a 
what do you call it, a tactical victory, but maybe a strategic defeat because you so had to. 99 defeat. electronic intelligence was strong enough, like uh, satellites. No way, no way, no way, no way, anywhere near it. The kind of uh, surveillance you subsequently developed on the borders mm -hmm. and heat intensive, uh, all these things existed, but they were so prohibitively expensive at that time. Right. That uh, very little of it used to be actually. It was all human India. So, so net net, do you think the war was avoidable or not avoidable? Once they came in, mm -hmm. there was no question. There was no question. No. We were going to skin them alive, mm -hmm. and we had to mm -hmm. because they one of their major uh, assumptions was that we will do nothing mm -hmm. because we in the past we had not done anything. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think we showed the intent. We kicked them out. So I, we didn't start it, mm -hmm. but luckily we finished. It. That's the interesting part. The Americans also had a role in bringing it to an early halt. But the Pakis were in deep trouble. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. I mean, I've seen the quantum of fire. We were raiding on them towards the end. Before towards the end, the Pakistani guns had virtually run away from the scene. Right. There was hardly any fire. Right. That's where the Bofors proved itself, basically. Bofors, 105s, the, the uh, 130s, as I said, the heavy mortars. Yeah. Oh, it was, I, I mean, I. I was, we were at the other end where we were watching them go. Yeah. What, what was happening on the guys on the on all this was raining end. down. I mean, I really yes, shudder to think about it. I also shudder to think about the wildlife that got very slaughtered. Yeah. Mushko, for example, had a tremendous population of uh, brown bears. Now it is thriving. Hmm. I, in fact, you know, uh, one aside, I was with Brigadier C.P. Nair, who was Brig hmm. uh, three, three diff. Hmm. And we came under fire. He used to joke. He used to tell us how can he joke? <laughs> they start firing at you. So we had slammed ourselves into the wall like that, and mm. one shell exploded near us, yeah, about mm. 30 meters away. Mm. And then lynx came out, yeah. Mm. And lynx is one of the most rare sightings yeah, in Ladakh. Yeah. I mean, Ladakh for two, yeah. Mm. And this guy had no choice but to actually go under our legs like this. He was terrified, poor chap. Mm. Well, we obviously, yeah, with the environmental damage, and you know, but sure, that is, of course, nobody thinks about nobody. those things at that time, but. Uh, even the Pakistanis and the Chinese and everybody has to realize mm. these boundaries are meaningless yeah. in the long run. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've got one planet here. That's right. Atelier mein ye, ye, tumare, itni jaldi tumare se nikal jayega, tumko pata nahi chalega kya ho raha. Raha, 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 raha. You know that lovely film here which Carl Sagan made, the little yeah. blue dot. Yeah. yeah. Puts everything in perspective. Correct. Absolutely. So my last question. As a journalist in your first stint, you worked with AP and India Today. And 1984 was a very significant year for you, where you covered Operation Blue Star, you covered uh, the anti-Sikh riots in Delhi, and then you also covered the Bhopal gas tragedy. How would you compare the journalism that you did in that stint versus the war journalism that you did later in Kargil? How do you see the two in perspective? I think, see, that period I was, I just moved on from Tiger Tops mm. in Ladakh. Mm. I was, I walked into India today. Mm. Uh, I was lucky I got that job. Mm. I was writing about environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody had heard of environment issues. Yeah. In fact, we did the first wildlife workshop in Sariska at that time, mm -hmm. in 1984, again. Mm -hmm. And one of the, my dad was conducting it and I had helped set it to get, set it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, to break the ice, we got everybody, to, everybody had got their jeeps and their trailers and then this thing and we had caravans. Then we had the Sariska Palace, we were set up for the evening. Yeah. It was a one week workshop, wildlife preservation. Mm -hmm. Army was getting serious. We got mm. till now the army was shooting every damn thing that moved. Mm. So we got there. So my dad decided, let's start with, okay, gentlemen, we are sitting around a bonfire. What was your immediate reaction when you were told you're going for a wildlife preservation uh, workshop for one week? Mm. So there's a poor lieutenant. He didn't have the benefit of having heard what the others are going to say. Mm. So he said, sir, pata nahi, sir, mere ko kyu pick kiya? Main vegetarian hu, sir. Or Amerigo Teeter ka vachar banane ke liye wild boar hai. Wildlife preservation for him meant bloody preservation of the, you go shoot it and preserve it. That was the kind of mindset we had. Mm. So it was a very interesting period. And even for me, I mean, you know, coming in from this, I was, I was not assigned mm. to shoot Blue Star. Mm. I was actually an assam. Mm. And because I had earlier wandered into the Golden Temple and I had met Binderwale and the army was aware of the, at least the top brass things that I had met him. Mm. General Sundarji had me flown to Chandigarh. Mm. I came here. Mm. He asked me a few questions. Mm. The moment he, I gave him some answers he didn't like, he immediately lost interest. Mm. Mm. I told him, yes, there, there are X amount of weapons in the Golden Temple. Mm. Because you see, as army brats, we notice these things. Mm. 
you know, we are perhaps even more keyed up about these things. So I knew as if there is an LMD covering this, there is an LMD covering this, there is this thing here. He said, I can't say that. I can't say that. And my dad was under him. Yeah, my dad was brigade at 11 core. In fact, the message I got just before I met General Sundarji was that, remember, he's my boss here. Yeah. So, you know, the fact is all that happened. And so, I, but I was there. I saw the attack from outside. I wasn't inside initially. Mm. Uh, I saw the damage that had happened. It was just, it was, it was sickening, mm. the whole thing. Again, bad intelligence, bad assumptions. I've, I've openly said in the book that uh, Blue Star was a botched up operation. Yeah. Because I wrote General Vique's, uh, Autobi- I'm his co-author in Autobi- autobiography, Autobi- and we have talked about it, where he was then in the MO directorate, and he had gone to the Prime Minister mm. house with the Chief, General mm. Vaidya, who mm. ironically got shot for mm. this decision. And there was the DGMO that time was the Kurgi officer, General mm. Sobana or something. Mm. And they told her it's not possible. And then General Sundarji comes in directly from Chandigarh and he just takes over the whole thing and says, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. No problem. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no problem. So you can bet anything, something going to go wrong. But for me, all these events mm-hmm. were a major learning curve. Mm-hmm. And they prepared me for what later happened. I mean, I was 31 years old yeah, when I shot Salt of the Earth. Mm-hmm. And the kind of responsibility, the way the Air Force treated you, mm-hmm. I would say move a squadron here, then move it here. Mm-hmm. As a, had I gone to the Air Force, I would have been a senior flight lieutenant or a squadron leader at best, you know, at, at the age of 31. Correct. And here I was like, you know, I, I was, I, I, and they gave me a lot of respect. I mean, it was, it was, it was absolutely fantastic. Hmm. I remember uh, uh, Air, Air, Air Vice Marshal, uh, Air Marshal Matkani later, but hmm. he, as AVM, he was ACS Ops. Hmm. And every time I'd go to him, hmm. the meeting would last exactly one and a half minutes. And we'll be asking all kinds of things. Sir, we want to move a squadron of Wing 21 from Hashimara to Kalai Kunda. Huh? Done. I want to move live ammunition here. Done. It would get over in one minute. We would be served lemon tea and then we'd sit around like, you know, so jaldi se chai khatam kar ki air marshal ka time was valuable. And he just sit there with a benign look. He was a Jaguar pirate. He always wore these, mm. you know, those shades. These guys were different. Mm. And it, so one day I, I myself asked him, I said, sir, kuch to pucho na. Mm. I mean, I may be asking, he says, no, Kunal, I'm sure you've thought it through. Mm. You won't ask for it otherwise. Mm. Now, you know, that puts a tremendous amount of responsibility on your shoulder. I never used to ask for anything. Mm. I would be very, very careful. Ten times thinking, if a helicopter I would be more concerned about how much fuel we were using, what we were doing, etc. It gets ingrained into you, yeah. Right. It was a tremendous learning curve for me. And I just think, uh, serendipity, call it whatever you want. I had somebody, as I said right in the beginning, I had somebody's hand on my head and yes. it continued to be like that. Which you do. Mm. So that brings us to the end of the questions at least. And now we have a small round of just rapid fire. Uh, one line answers, if you will, as fast as you can. So, uh, one war correspondent in India or abroad whom you admire the most? Oh Lord, you want a quick answer on that one? <laughs> there, there are a few people. Who, everybody does some very good work. Here yes. and there. Yes. Um, Pratibha Dutt, first woman to go into the yes. 65 war and actually shoot that yes. as yes. a woman. Yes. Uh, I, I also had the privilege of working with her. I didn't know her very well, but right. yes, I can think of her as a name straight away. Right. Uh, George Verghese and all these people, right. they, they, 62 war, they were actually in Tezpur hanging around. They didn't get much opportunity to actually right. report on. Right. But uh, some Indians have done such. Very, very good work. Sure. Among the contemporary lot? Yeah. I would say some people have really stuck their necks out. Okay. You know, okay. uh, uh, Maru Fraza. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Right. Uh, he is a very balanced chap. Right. Uh, uh, if he's not thinking of himself as the center of the universe, he'd be an absolutely brilliant guy. But uh, Maru is, 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 is wonderful in giving a percep- perception, right. a perceptive and a very balanced view of what's going on. Okay. There are a lot of other guys who have done, have contributed in, sure. in the field of defense. Sure. One general officer whom you admire the most, whether Army, Air Force, Navy. I would probably be colored by my father's views also. But right. General was. Right. Was one of them. Right. Eric was. Right. Very good officer. Right. Then there was, uh, I personally had a very high opinion of people, Jal uh, Padmanabhan. Hmm. He was an artillery officer. Okay. My own interaction with him was just on two or three small issues. And that was enough for me to rate him very highly. Right. 
and uh, I have very very high opinion of General Vikas Singh. Uh, okay. We really stuck our necks out on that whole yes. issue because he was right, oh. and he was you know and he stood up and fought. Hmm. And we need people like that who are not going to take bullshit. Absolutely. Yeah. Your favorite comfort food? Comfort food. I eat any damn thing that moves. That's why I'm <laughs> double the size of what I should be. Yeah, anything. Okay. Your favorite personal weapon? My 5D Mark II uh, Canon camera was 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 my uh, has seen me through the Northeast trilogy. Everybody keeps changing cameras. I don't. I've still got my little baby with me. It's really taken a hammering. Okay. Uh, during the '95 uh, period when I was in the valley, I had to also hmm. carry a weapon because hmm. uh, nobody's going to protect you when the firing starts. Yes. Initially, it was very fanciful to carry an AK-47, but then mm. I realized it, it was a, it was not as effective. So even I started going with that slightly short barrel SLR Belgium version. Right. Right. Gives you a better chance. Right. Yeah. Right. And but I, but my favorite weapon is still the 9 mm Beretta. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Filmmaking or writing? Both are different. Yeah. Okay. Writing gives you a deeper uh, long longevity. Okay. Uh, film, when it's out, it creates a bit of a flash. Of course, it lasts on YouTube, right. this, that, right. and the other. Right. Right. Both are completely different fields. And let me try to, oh, the only thing I want to say there is that don't try and do both. Okay. So then you fall between two stools. Because once you're, if, you, if you're doing that, then you, while you're taking a still, you're thinking, Ki film pe leta or film pe, shooting, are ya, still in it. So you know you have to draw a line. Sure. Fighters or submarines? I tell any day. I I tell you the the respect I have for submarine guys. Yeah. Get under the water in those tubes, yeah, and then you live there. I, I mean, I've spent time in submarines. Okay. I was on a kilo class sub Okay. I got winched out. You know, we 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 surfaced and we had to we had to RV with run with it. Right. So the helicopter came and it lowered a thin wire. Yeah, it was like a little figure. Right. So, I mean, the triangular strap. So, you put that under your armpits and you're told to keep your arms out. You know, and as you go, they have pulled, pulled out of the, the turret or the, the, what do you call the submarines thing. Yeah. Right. So, I was pulled out of that little thing. Right. And the bo Navy was having bets that this guy is going to fall into the water. <laughs> but I didn't. So, sure. Yeah. But okay. the fighters, of course, is a completely different ball game. Okay. Kulu or Dehradun? Uh, I was born in Dehradun. I grew up there. Yes. You're a Dosco? I am a Dosco. Uh, they are. Uh, Kulu is home yes. now. Yes. Uh, I have my dogs there. Yes. I live there alone and I have. I mean, I lost some dogs who were poisoned. Right. And now I've got some new ones. Right. The flowers, the birds, everything. I mean, everything talks to you. Yeah. I am very happy wherever I am. Okay. Right. You can put me in, even in Chandigarh or anywhere. Everything right. for, for. I think most of us who grew up in the army. Yeah. This is one thing, yeah. We, Wellington is home, this is home, that is home, Jalandhar is home. True. Ye I lagaya tha, ye bottle brush I plant kiya tha, you know. True. So for us, the whole whole subcontinent. Whole country is home. Great. Ladakh or Northeast India? Same thing. The whole country is as precious. But you shot both of them from the air. I have lived in Ladakh for two years. Apologies are so uh, different. They are. And yet they are so similar. So similar. The same country. Right. right. Great. Different shades. Great. Yeah. So, uh, viewers, I'm sure I've had a mesmerizing time listening to Kunal and his experiences. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there will be many more sessions with you and uh, we will gain so much more insights from what you have done in life. And we look forward to more such sessions. And thank you, Kunal. It's been a lovely... Thank you, Pankaj. It's been a wonderful. We look forward to meeting again. Thank you very much. Thank you.